hobby quick hits. Delivering that breaking hobby news. Directly to your earlobes. You wanna know those hot drops from the car shop? We've got you covered. With your host, John Newman. Welcome back to another episode of Hobby Quick Hits. Going to do something today that we've never done, or at least I don't remember doing one of these, a Q&A episode. Now, I do that question segment on the show where I take one question I get asked and answer it, but this is going to be a whole episode uh, with those questions. I, I put out some posts on social media. Uh, asking uh, for you know questions you'd like me to answer, uh, either pertaining to to myself or the hobby. I know other podcasters do these. Uh, I have never done them before uh, in this kind of fashion. So we're gonna tackle our first one today. About five uh, to six questions. I, I think I'll do these if it goes well. I think I'll do these like every couple months. I don't want to beat it. Uh, to death, but we'll do these uh, every so often. Just kind of uh, let your hair down, or just you know, people wonder some stuff. Uh, and I get questions uh, unsolicited too, and so a lot of times I'll ask that person, "Hey, I'll, I'll answer you, but can I use this question uh, on the show in that one question segment?" So maybe uh, we'll start doing this, like I said, every couple months. I don't want to, I don't want to overdo them. Uh, but I think they're interesting, and I think a lot of the questions, you know, one person asks, probably others out there were wondering about. So we're going to have fun with it today. But before we get to the show, let's hear from our great sponsors, Mojo Break. MojoBreakShop.com is the best place to get your sealed wax products and breaks. They not only have the best selection, but the best prices. Whether it's a box or a whole case, they are your guys. They ship worldwide to your doorstep. Their reputation as one of the most trusted in the hobby goes unmatched. They are the 2021 Topps Rip Party Champion Breakers. From sports card to Pokemon cards, their selection can't be beat. They offer daily deals and pre-orders. Hey guys, John Newman here. Mojo's prices are already great, but to save an additional 10% off anything in their store, use the code Quick Hits, that's Q-U-I-C-K-H-I-T-S. Check out the full service store that's open seven days a week in Santa Clara, California, or the website at mojobreak.com. Let's check out this week's Hobby Wax Releases. Take it away, Owen. Hey guys, I'm from Sports Trash Shop. Let's go over the weekly releases. On the 17th, we have 2022 Decision Vault Box. On the 18th, we have 2022 Panini Flawless Baseball. 2021-22 Panini Immaculate Basketball. 2022 Panini Impeccable Football. 2022 Tots Finest Baseball. Upper Deck Marvel Wand Decision. On the 20th, we have Pokemon Crown Zenith Elite Trainer Box. Pokemon Crown Zenith Renjukli V and Vicardico V Collection. 2022 Tops Chrome Formula One Racing Light. Yu-Gi-Oh! Amazing Defenders. On the 25th, we have 2023 Historic Autograph National Pastime Autograph Baseball. 2022-23 Panini Donra Soccer. 2022 Panini Illusions Football. 2021-22 Panini Mosaic Basketball Hobby. On the 27th, we have 2022 Leaf Exotic Football. 2023 to Star Autographed Baseball Platinum Edition. And True Creator Hol- Holiday Jumbo Edition. See you guys. Let's go around the hobby verse and catch up on this week's hobby news. All right, we do have some news stories this week. Let's start with Collectible. They've uh, issued a press release. It reads as follows, after recently unveiling a multi-pronged partnership with eBay, leading collectibles platform, Collectible continues to build momentum today. They announced 
an innovative and exclusive two-round sealed competitive bidding process designed to increase price discovery and liquidity of iconic collectible assets and to create additional shareholder opportunities for collectibles fractional ownership exchange. The launch also signals collectibles' first introduction of comic books, graded video games, trading card games, and sports art to the platform. In addition, the launch of BWIC represents collectibles' international expansion efforts as bidding will be available to collectors and investors all over uh, the world. Uh, BWIC stands for Bids Wanted in Competition. Um, Collectibles version of BWIC will be tweaked and tailored to investment grade collectibles across various categories. The competitive bidding process will feature a propriety fractional ownership component called group bidding, which allows verified accredited investors to jointly bid on assets in the auction. For the first time in history, individual bidders will compete head to head against a group of investors for the opportunity to own premier collectibles assets. Uh, the inaugural BWIC will feature collectible heavyweights such as a Mano 52 Bowman SGC 10, high end graded comics including Superman and Batman, both number ones, a trio of graded Super Mario Brothers video games, Dragon Ball Z black label set, an original Cy Young rookie card, an original Type 1 photo to create Jim Brown's iconic rookie card, and selected assets from collectibles, fractional ownership, platinum, and more. This will launch uh, at the end of this month. We also want to welcome Robert Edward Auctions to the Sports Card Nation family. They are a new sponsor of Sports Card Nation, and they just kicked off their January auction, which runs to the 22nd. So uh, hurry up and get those beds in. Uh, some of the key components of that auction, including 1952 top Willie Mays, which is graded PSA 1.5, but there's also something else on that card. A Willie Mays autograph, which graded a 7. Also in the auction, uh, Jordan, 86-87 uh, Fleer, PSA 9. A 1998 Upper Deck SP Authentic uh, Peyton Manning rookie, uh, PSA 10, and a sealed 1981 Topps football cello box, famous for containing Joe Montana rookies. They also have uh, 250 other unopened boxes uh, as part of this auction. It's a 300, uh, 3,000 lot auction, and again, runs to 122. And again, we welcome REA as part of the Sports Card Nation family. Gem Rate uh, uh, released its year totals for uh, the grading uh, part of the hobby. Over uh, about 12 million cards were graded this year. PSA led the way 7 to 1 over the other finishers. Uh, it's a great service provided by Ryan Straczynski of Gemrate, and he will be our guest on Sports Card Nation on the 24th of February. So look forward to that. Uh, BT Collectibles uh, from Woodstock, Georgia, a little north of Atlanta, is the latest store to get robbed, unfortunately. $119,000 worth of uh, goods were stolen, including a thousand uh, cards. They smashed the front door. They also smashed all the the showcases. So uh, again, uh, that uh, you know, burglary and robbery is not going away. And we we wish BT Collectibles uh, the best and hope that that perpetrator uh, gets caught. Tops uh, another screw up. Got to talk about it. Twenty twenty Bowman Draft. Um, some serial number cards supplied to 20 prospects across four different colored parallels. Sky blue, purple, aqua, and regular blue uh, had the same, you know, uh, number, like multiple copies of the same serial number uh, inserted. Now, that, do that doesn't mean there's more uh, autograph cards. It just means there'll be some missing uh, serial number. So if your card is autographed and says like to 199 or 25, 
um, it's still 25 existing. So there might be someone that has two people that have number 134 of 199, but another number wasn't made. Um, so there's still 199 of that card. So it doesn't affect the print runs. It's just the serial numbers uh, were duplicated. So not a great look, but uh, at least, uh, you know, there's still the same amount of cards uh, out there in circulation once they're uh, open from the packs. Uh, in closing the new segment, want to announce uh, our website, www.sportscardnationpodcast.com uh, has been updated. We're, we're, you know, you go to the front page, you'll see all the upcoming shows. Uh, we're going to stay up on that new release, new product release schedules. There, we ordered a, we uh, added a card mentions page for our new card mentions show uh, and all that. So there's more more stuff to be gathered uh, from our website. Uh, check that out, if you will. <laughs> Feature presentation. All right. This is our first ever crack at a fully fledged QA episode and uh, excited to do so. So, we're going to get right into it with our que uh, first question. It comes from, I don't have a first name, I've, it came from a social media account. Officially underscore AC underscore 33. He says, When? If ever, if ever in parentheses, will the hobby see another boom like it did in 2021, I believe? Great question. Uh, I get this asked this, you know, sometimes when I'm a guest on other uh, podcasts. And, um, you know, uh, there's a chance it may never see what we saw during that year, year and a half boom. Uh, you know, now... You know, right now we're kind of in a correction, a reset, if you will. Uh, but there's going to be another spike, uh, you know, uh, at some point. Could it be, you know, two years from now, three years, four years? I don't know. Uh, you know, I think the next chance for a spike is when we see, frankly, fanatics start to produce, you know, uh, products that Topps used to make, Topps Chrome basketball, Topps Chrome football. I think the, the nostalgia effect of that will bring some new folks back in. Uh, I think it not only will bring new folks back in, it will, I shouldn't say new folks back in, old folks that left back in, I think it'll bring new collectors in that have never collected before. And I think it'll excite people who are already in the hobby that didn't leave uh, and to see, you know, if it can live up sort of to the legacy of those brands uh, before they, uh, you know, had to stop producing them with the loss of licensing. So I think that's the next spike. But, you know, you mentioned the boom of 2021, officially AC. I, I don't know. Uh, that you know, I don't. No one predicted that for sure. Matter of fact, with the pandemic, most people predicted the opposite. Yours truly included. So there's no way I could you know tell you when or if that sort of phenomenon will ever occur again. However, like I just said, I think there will be another spike. It has to be from where we we're leveled off right now. So my prediction for that spike will be. When Fanatics really fully takes over those licenses and starts producing those legacy brands. All right, our second question comes from a, a person I've gotten to know through the years, a big fan and follower of the shows, Greg. And he asked, John, I, I watch Hobby Hotline and sometimes I notice your camera angles change. What is the reason uh, for that? Uh, there's no real scientific answer here, unfortunately. Sometimes I just play around with different angles. What does this look like? Maybe I want to capture something behind me, a sign or a card. And so I'll move uh, the camera. Uh, you know, as far as other people on that show, I, I can't speak to it, but uh, everyone sort of has 
uh, a different setup, right? Sideways, head on, a little bit at an angle. For me, I try to be consistent with that, but I do know I'd change it to maybe capture something behind me or lighting. You know, sometimes it's a lighting thing, right? Uh, I do have some additional lighting or artificial lighting, if you will, but sometimes adjusting the camera, uh, you know, makes it better. So, again, not a scientific answer there, but there you go. All right, next question comes from Daniel, and I love this question. Uh, I, I've never gotten this question before, but it's a good one. Uh, so kudos to Daniel. Does hobby content and you creating it affect the way you hobby? Does hobby content... Sure. I mean, obviously, you know, when you talk about something, whether it be on this show, one of my other shows, Hobby Hotline, I'm a guest on another podcast, you know, how you answer a question, right? Or what did, you know, I learned stuff from listening to other people too. So the answer, you know, the quick answer to that for sure is, is, is yes. I do have some core beliefs and strategies that probably would never really change. Uh, but, uh, you know, the hobby's changing uh, by the week, by the year, right? So, you you know, I've changed along with it. The hobbyist I am here in 2023, I was a different hobbyist in, you know, 2005. Uh, I was a different hobbyist in 2010. So, sure, I think hobby content and what is hobby content, right? It's based on real time what's happening uh, in the hobby verse. So, uh, for sure, I think the answer is yes. Uh, and I think it always will be. Another great question from Michael says, do you ever experience hobby burnout? Uh, yes, but not as often as maybe it once was for me and and the reason i say that is because i've i've done things to avoid it uh more so now as an older smarter hobbyist right um you know years ago you're younger you know when i had the store and i was there literally seven days a week it was easier to get you know burnt out um traveling for shows not every weekend but a couple weekends a month and you lose those weekends as far as doing other extracurricular activities, you can get burnout. Even content creation can cause burnout. I, I've said this on you know on my podcast, right? There was a time, probably about two years ago, maybe a little longer than that. I think it was in the the forty the sports car nation forty to fifty uh, episode numbers where. I was just doing stuff every day for two, three, four hours. And it it became monotonous to the point where I was getting close to like almost viewing it as work rather than a labor of love and fun. And so how do I avoid it? You know, uh, do I ever experience it? I, I did. and But how do I avoid it now is just, Having a schedule, right? Having a, a work-life hobby balance, right? Uh, and I don't spend more than really an hour and a half to two hours a day, if that. And there's some days, you know, I do what I call like a, a retreat hobby weekend. I don't go anywhere like you typically hear retreat and you think you go in a cabin in the woods. But every about every maybe once a month uh, on average, I'll take a weekend off. From any hobby stuff, I won't. I won't hold cards. I won't mess with cards. I won't list. I won't even record any kind of, um, uh, you know, audio for a current show or future show. I just uh, take a break, a weekend away from the hobby, uh, and uh, you know, I might post something on social media, but I'm really not doing a lot of hobby stuff that weekend. Um, limit, you know, my time during the week, uh, to try to be an hour, hour and a half. Um, you know, I like to do it, you know, at around nine o'clock PM, uh, to, you know, 1030. And that way it gives me sort of a cap when I know it's time to wind down, 
get ready for bed to to go to work the next day. And so you you also got to prioritize what stuff is, right? Uh, Your family should come first, right? Your job is is right there. Uh, Faith, uh, if you're of that uh, ilk, uh, you've got to put stuff in perspective. And I know a hobby is very important, and I've done it for 40 years now. And uh, I love it, uh, but I also, to keep loving it, I've got to, you know, not overdo it, right? The more you do something, it can it can be, uh, it can cause burnout. That's not just hobby, that's anything, right? Job burnout. You're working 60 hours a week at a job, you, you, and you, you're not loving it, uh, you, you, you're going to get burned out. So, great question. Thank you. All right, our last question for this episode on the Q&A will come from James, and he says, why do people like the negative narrative? Great question. Uh, I've been asked this before. It, you know, it's hard. Everyone, you know, we're not cookie-cutter people. Why do some people just want to speak of the narrative? Or, or hear about the narrative. I think some people want to just speak, and all they talk about is the negative stuff in the hobby, the other, you know, the bad people or bad things that companies are doing. Uh, I think it comes from two places. I think they are trying to be informative, but I think they're generally, when when all someone talks about is negative and bad things. Again, I'm going to sound like a psychologist here, but, you know, working in special education and taking some of the the psychology courses that uh, I've taken as part of that job, I've learned this, right? People who talk only negative are not in a good place themselves. They're generally unhappy with maybe their home life, their personal life, their work life, and it's a way to make themselves feel better talking about other bad people, other bad things, right? It it pushes it off their chest. There's a there's a word that uh, I can't that escapes me now that uh, that it's uh, that it's called, but uh, transposing, I think, uh, or something to that effect. So, you know, uh, content creators that all they do is talk negative stuff. Uh, you know, again, I don't, I don't, I don't know him personally, but uh, I think it generally comes from a place of unhappiness. With you know, hey, trying to be informative and help people out in there too. Sure, uh, you know, I don't think it's a hundred percent of one or the other. Um, it's that train wreck syndrome, right? You know, when you're driving on the road and there's a a crash in the left lane, and you're in the right lane, right? You slow down. You slow down. You want to see, is anyone hurt? Can I see anybody? Right? It's. I think it's just human. It's almost human nature, right? We just want to see, you know, what happened? What happened? That sort of natural uh, tendencies. So I think that's where that negative narrative, uh, you know, comes from. Again, like you can't paint everyone with the same brush. Check out our website at www.sportscardnationpodcast.com for the new release schedule, our blog, all show episodes, and so much more.